The following is a Complexity production. One, two, three, Complexity! This is the press conference. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Oh, you can be serious then. You've got questions, we've got answers. And now, your hosts, Complexity. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the press conference. My name is Kim, I'm your host for today, and I'm excited to welcome another special guest this week. We've... Uh, I kind of wanted him on last week to talk about the big news, but I'm um, oh, me. Yeah, I'm glad we have you on this oh, week, Daniel. Soren special too. Not me. He's oh. special, yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a different <laughs> way, yeah. He's special. You're <laughs> actually special. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. How you doing? I'm great. Um, it's gorgeous outside. It's perfect Soren weather. He's gonna have to take off that sweatshirt soon, um, so I can't complain. We've had some some fun news come out last week. I was a little little preoccupied with that, so I was unable to on here last week but i'm excited to have my first skim in charge uh press yeah, conference experience there you go. this is the first time yes well who uh, obviously we also have as always our panel member jason couldn't do this without you oh you do it without me oh, all the time we, <laughs> we, 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 make, we make do but <laughs> it's just not the same how you doing doing great man doing great been a great week and uh it's gonna be a great spring and as alluded to earlier, we're also joined by Soren. Greetings. This time around, you have fun news to talk about. I do. I do. We got through the worst day of the calendar year yesterday, and now we can go to the fun part. We can talk about the fun part. Oh, well, yeah. He doesn't like April Fool's. No, it's just a fair warning. <laughs> stupid day. It's a fair warning. But I did mention it, Daniel. Uh, we did talk about GameStop last week, but uh, unfortunately, we didn't have you there. Um, but now you're here. Walk us through that. You know, GameStop... <laughs> <laughs> from your perspective from the top. what does like how did this come about what does this mean to you um no i mean it's been extremely exciting uh it's been really special and i don't think we could have asked for a better partner to be leading our new performance center with um it unlocks an enormous amount of doors i know suki mentioned and started to talk to about last time and just the brand association with someone who's been in the space for so long and a legendary brand as jason's talked about on multiple interviews and podcasts it's it's a great association just a great synergy of what we're doing i think it shows kind of the the futures we're trying to go into together you know we've both have been legendary brands in gaming for a long time and have seen the ups and downs and the rise and the falls and have been around for all kind of decades and, and moments of that. Um, and just as we're kind of pioneering our new future in this beautiful home uh, up here in Frisco, you know, they're doing the same. And I think it's just really exciting what we're doing with them. Um, it's also nice to have the other two orgs in Dallas be a part of that. I think it unlocks a ton of opportunities for what we're doing here locally. But I think the the really exciting thing is when we get to a national and even, even global le level with them, with the infrastructure they have, the relationships they have, um, and some of the, the special programming that we're building with them specifically around it for this year. So uh, there's a lot involved in it, and my team's going to be extremely busy kind of managing it. Um, but we're super excited. We're already working on our first clinic uh, material for Fortnite to get people ready for the World Cup that's going to live on all the GameStop channels and it's our first cut and they're awesome. So I think we're just, you know, ecstatic. It's definitely, you know, one of those fun weeks you get when it, it all starts to get there. But Jason, myself, the rest of the team have all been putting in hours since October-ish, I want to say. Um, so the, these things don't happen overnight and, you know, it's just kind of credit to the entire team to get to the finish line and, and, you know, be the ones that get to announce this. Yeah. Just so we're clear. I mean, Daniel sourced the steel and really quarterback the steel and, uh, kind of forged the partnership with GameStop. So it was a huge win, um, for him and, uh, for, for his team and for the whole company. So we're super proud of him and he did a great job. And like he alluded to, you know, this is just kind of the beginning. Um, and I think it's going to be a really fruitful partnership. And yeah, we mentioned it last week. There's so many possibilities with this partnership, especially like you said, locally. Mm -hmm. So I think fans, this is something that fans can really look forward to. Like, uh, 
to basically once the doors open to the GSPC, then yeah, there's going to be lots of stuff. I think the other exciting part of it too is that there's some stability elements to it. You know, you don't see a lot of partners coming in and making a commitment to this level to say, "Hey, we're going to be with you for at least the next three years." Um, so it, it allows us to plan and be strategic in a different lens than other partnerships in the space don't have that advantage of. You know, there's a lot of flexibility in our deal to understand, you know, this ecosystem changes, but knowing that we're kind of building for the next three, five, 10 years is extremely important to kind of find success in this relationship. And especially since you mentioned, you know, with the other two orgs also kind of yeah. involved that really anchors us, anchors it all. Uh, yeah, GameStop, I think we're all happy for any further news and updates. Stay tuned to the GSPC on Twitter. Check out also the website, the website, gspc.gg. Beautiful. Please. Yeah, the other things with that, and kind of comes to a larger construction series we're building out that we've announced um, and opened the space. We've been filming a ton of content, so we're we're really excited. I know we've talked about it in previous press conferences, but excited to kind of show the process of how we got here from a build out, from a design, take people in there, start to show it. But definitely the the renders on gspc.gg give you a good quick glance into what the space is gonna look like. But once we start to uncover some of the details, some of the more partnerships in it, some of the strategic performance elements we're putting into, I think it's gonna be really, really exciting for the whole Absolutely. fan base and just the industry. Definitely. I, so look, I'm sitting right next to Kevin and I always like see like different designs for all the various things. Like this is so exciting. This is still unfolding. So I think, yeah, I think fans, once they come along for the ride, that's gonna be super, super fun for everybody. Speaking of things that are super, super fun, Dota 2, uh, finally some really exciting news. We won some stuff. We won some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you take it away? Uh, yeah, we, uh, I think it was Sunday? Sunday. We, we clinched our spot for the uh, Disneyland MDL major, uh, the first major of this season that we're going to attend. I don't know if you know when the last major was that we were at, but it's been a while. Um, Despite all uh, all visa issues, despite everything we we had to put our team through, they they came through. Um, this Adam weekend. was playing from Adam, Germany. Adam was playing from Makes Germany. He had impressive. to he had to leave Frankfurt uh, before this qualifier, go to Berlin in a train, uh, just to play there from basically the offices of um, Dojo, Dojo Madness. Madness. Yeah, so he wasn't even like in a in the gaming room he was just in their offices uh they kept them open big shout out to them uh had yep. to leave the offices open basically till 4 a.m every night um so he could play um had a pretty good run i would say we we 2-0 or 4-0 team team on the first day um struggled a little bit i think we we played re really well against eg eg is just uh methodical or like way more methodical than we are yet and then on, on Sunday, it came down to us against uh, the new Ford. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was, that was I don't know if you all watched it. That was a very, very exciting game. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of sad that Beef isn't here. So you, like there's normally a back and forth with Dota talk because uh, he thinks he knows something about the game. Um, <laughs> and I get to teach him. But uh, it was it was really nice of the guys. And uh, obviously, Adam not being here. <clears throat> was a big thing for like replay reviews and just general com communication. Because every now and then after a game, you get try to refresh right. and you go outside and you talk to your team. And then obviously if your captain is not there, you can just like kind of have to repeat everything and, and that kind of uh, sucks in, in, in that way. But uh, yeah, we, we came through against forward. Um, little nugget that I can share here. Uh, we felt like we all drafted them in, in game three, kind of could play to our our strength in the in the carry matchup they basically like 10th pick came up and adam was laughing and said like they have to have to ban our naga because they're going to be so afraid of miracles naga and we get troll and we're just going to destroy this game and this is exactly what happened I, was just, I think they used all their reserve time adam was laughing for two minutes straight knowing what's going to happen <laughs> And um, came up with uh, with the troll pick. Uh, game got a little bit scary when Zach uh, died in 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 the middle uh, without a buyback. That got forward back in, but we played. I think one of the more methodical games that I've ever oh, for sure. saw us play. We always had issues pushing high ground, um, either doing it too too fast or too slow. 
I think we, we hit a very good timing here and it's kind of kind of speaks to the growth of this team um, despite not training together on the same same continent. Well, hopefully that issue is solved. Right? That that should be solved. Yeah, we don't really know. I mean, we don't want I'm to not, jinx it, I suppose. No, until this, he actually gets right. here with yeah. Visa in hand. Then let's not mention that, but we, <laughs> there's a big question mark still. But yeah, so for an Adam update, uh, Adam got word from the embassy, U.S. embassy in Frankfurt <clears throat> yesterday that he can pick up his passport. Um, so currently he's on a train from Berlin to Frankfurt. Nice. Um, he will hopefully have his passport in hand tomorrow morning. And then be on a plane here. Arrive, I think, on Thursday, Thursday, three p.m. He should be in Dallas. So starting Friday, we can scrim with everyone in in one room. And there's really like qualifying for the major actually really sets up a nice timeline for us too, with uh, Mumbai coming up, so we don't have to go to the minor. Exactly. And then from Mumbai directly to the major. Or yeah, well, I mean, there's like there's like eight yeah. eight days in between, so we're gonna probably stay in Europe because it makes no sense to lose essentially like three more days to jet lag yeah um so we're probably going to go from mumbai to uh frankfurt B munich berlin somewhere and those and those cities we're going to stay in germany just because i'm i'm the manager and i get to make those calls um and i want to be home uh, i really wanted to go to this one I, w I haven't been to a dota major in a very long time so <laughs> neither have we yeah <laughs> and that's probably why um unfortunately i don't think i'm gonna make it to paris because of cool headquarters stuff yeah the timing yeah. for for everyone in the orc outside of <laughs> out, very, out, <laughs> outside of me is kind of iffy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's tough it's gonna be interesting for sure but i think there are worse there are worse reasons to miss that for yeah um but to bring you b back down a little bit because you're super ecstatic i just wanted to bring up the april fools that we pulled yesterday I thought it was hilarious. There were people that actually believed we were actually doing it. For those that don't know, we released a, an entire video, uh, including our, uh, or your Jordan Deaton, rather, uh, in a... Well, possessive. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, well, he's now mine. It's my player now. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, basically pretending as if we're entering Farming Simulator. Which he did see he is such a perfect person for yeah. it too, because he's got the kind of slang lingo, the slingo, you know, going on to be a farmer and he just killed it. I really thought it was it really too. great. Yeah. He was really he improvised a lot on the spot too. Like a lot of it is actually really him. That like that, that oh, like his fantastic. that's born from his from his uh from his idea. So big props to him. Yeah, that's great. I will say though, like and, and Jason, you called it out yesterday. What social media has done with April Fools, it's it's a little over the top. Yeah. And if you yeah. believe anything, it, we gotta figure out like more of like a long con. Right. Moving forward, like Cam Noon did a whole mm -hmm. long con on kind of what he's got going on. Like we should have started farming similar applications like two months ago and then announced <laughs> the team, brought some sponsors on and and, and kind yeah. of brought it back. Um, I even thought like what CSGO was doing, you know, they removed cash and brought in vertigo. I was yeah, like, people weren't sure. If I was like, was is this a long con? Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Multi-day April yeah. Fools, um, but apparently not. But no, it, we got some good pickup from that. It was pretty, pretty funny. As a German, I was slightly excited at the prospect of us having a farming simulator team. That game is pretty huge in Germany. Is it? It is pretty huge. With like yeah, truck I'm driving so. simulator and yeah, oh, truck driving all the other that simulator. Game is that game is hype. That game is hype. <laughs> anyway, now happy news for you again. MTGA. Hmm? I, w I would say it's pretty happy it's, news. It's happy news. I, I think our team did very well. Um, Amy, top 16. Uh, Merchant. What event was it? Was it it was the Clark? Mythic Invitational from Magic, uh, Magic the, Gathering. the Gathering Arena uh, down in PAX East, I PAX think. PAX East. It's a East. million PAX dollar East. prize pool. Yeah. yeah. Million, yeah, million dollar prize pool, two hundred fifty thousand for the winner. Um, we had Amy and Merchant in as players, alias as as a caster who killed it. By the way, oh, uh, everybody big, loved her. Big shout out to her. She was she was incredible. I don't know much about Magic, like the intricacies of the game, but her explanations were actually really good for even like a dummy like me to understand it. Um, but yeah, we had Amy and, and Merchant play. Amy uh, got through to day three. I want to say she was in Group B. Um, when well, she got to skip a day. Because yeah, she she did the the classic um, the classic complexity thing. She lost her first match and then had to go through the lower bracket, um, the longest possible way you can take. Um, Merchant, on the other hand, was also lost his first game and then kind of tried the same approach. But he basically faced four four Hearthstone uh, four Magic Hall of Famers in a row, and he beat. 
two, lost to two. Still and then, impressive. Run, and then his, his tournament was over. But um, as far as I know from, from all of them, they had a, a great time over in, in Boston. Amy got to show them around uh, the local cuisine, uh, got to show them around Boston because she is from there. And they all had, had a great time um, being for the first big Magic event. And I guess this is just a, the kickoff event for, for things to come. As far as I understand, the magic rollout plan. Um, so seems like they're doing big things. Yeah, they they seem to be like doing. We're going to talk about artifact in a bit, um, <clears throat> which is completely the opposite of this. But magic has been doing everything right. Yeah, like a year ago or so, the the big thing was Hearthstone against artifact, and no one kind of talked about MTGA. And now MTGA is on on Twitch with a lot of big influencers or big people streaming it. Every single time they release a new set, they reach out to a lot of influencers. They put a lot of money into their game. I think they're having a pretty good plan of how to combine their paper magic and their online kind of thing together into tournaments. And um, I think they're doing, like so far, they've done everything right. They listened to community, to the community when they released patch notes or patches that were kind of controversial. They reversed that or put them on hold to kind of like give people with a good idea of the game, uh, time to play test it. Like I've never seen someone have such a flawless rollout Great to see. with so little pushback from the community. And then if there was pushback responding to it. Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we have, we obviously have a couple of MTG players, uh, streamers as well. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely going to be excited for what the future holds. Kind of remin reminiscent a little bit of Dota. You know, Dota rolled out with their big event, the one million dollar event in in uh, in at Gamescom, and Almost then they one point six, uh, one point six, but you know, like one million foot, like whatever. The first TI. Yeah, the first TI. I'm just saying. So yeah, hopefully. <laughs> since, since you mentioned, let, let's skip the one topic first and go straight to artifacts. Since you did bring up artifact, yeah, and it is a sh it is the exact opposite. Yeah, I, I feel like that they did like. I don't think if they necessarily did a lot of things wrong, but the reception was just not. So they came out with a blog post basically saying they, uh, they're they working, still working on the game. They haven't given up, but uh, it has never in the history of Valve occurred to them that their expectation for a game and the reality is so far apart. So they basically are not going to patch the game, as far as I understand, for the next couple of months. Yes. And then in a couple of months, basically release a brand new <laughs> artifact it's basically going to be a relaunch yeah so that's kind of their wow. idea and um tying this and into into our roster because we had we kind of banked on artifact a little bit um but all of our players have found different homes some in, in auto chess some went back to gwend uh some went to magic so um all the players that we had moved to a to our artifact division are still going to be in the organization because they found they went back to what they were originally doing or in, in JJ's case have found a, a very large audience for auto chess. Um, so uh, we're just going to wait it out, I guess, and see if if after this relaunch there's still interest in the game or if they just messed their opportunity up. Sure. That's going to be... Yikes. This is, this, is like, this, is like having, this is like having limp and team talks for Dota. It's just like, sure, okay, cool. I go. mean... <clears throat> You wanna you wanna say something about card games? Your your secret passion? No, I, <laughs> I I love card games. I will say though, and I want to still get to it. The the one game I don't see on here that we probably should have talked about is GTA role playing, because it's also <laughs> taken over the office. It, it has taken over the it's office. Taken over all my free time for I, like two weeks now. I got on, and this is super weird tangent, but I was like, okay, I'm, I'm it's taken over the office. Like I need to go watch a video on it, and I. I know Jason's like a big fan of Chang and I'm like, all right, let me go like pull up just a YouTube video, try and get a summary, see what's going on. And I pull it up and the video starts and in the top left, it has the top donator and it just says Jason Lee. It's <laughs> 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 like, what are hey, the odds? The one video streamers. I click on. It, says you just, like, them. it was all hilarious. Them. I was all for it. But that's the other thing that's like taking over our office. Um, and not just our office, Twitch in general. Like the numbers are insane. Oh, it's yeah. wild. I think Summit it's, went and a lot of people, you know, followed him and uh, it's so funny to watch. It's definitely rated R, but I haven't laughed this hard in a long time. I've laughed more in the last two weeks than I have probably in the last two years. 
just sitting around watching these guys get into all this trouble. And it's really funny stuff. I, I Shout some, out to the Chang gang. <laughs> <laughs> I had some time this weekend. Jason sent me like, I was like, Jason, where do I start? He sent me like six guys. And then I put like too many hours into it. I was like, okay, I get this. This is, this is wild. Yeah, um, it's too funny. We need to figure out how to get in there. I still think like maybe we get Jordan Cornboy Dean Ooh, into some GTA hilarious. servers and get it going. Yep, for sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail your no, game. That's good, no, that's a good point. I, really <laughs> want, I, I want to say there's at least one of our streamers that did stream a bit, a little bit of GTA anyway. So I'm not sure. Like Skills used to do it. Uh, Skills but, called out in his stream too. It was yeah. like, guys, should I get on there? And I'm like. Please. He would be perfect. I think he'd be hilarious. Skills would be hilarious. Yeah, I think, oh, yeah. I think a couple of years he's ago, he had like a second it. channel that was just GTA Go role-playing at the first big wave. Really? Of yeah. I, yeah, I'd be so into it. His, I mean, he's been so far. I know you want to get into FIFA, too, so I'm transitioning for you. Um, <laughs> but his stream has been awesome. Like, what yeah, he's, he's been, been doing on lot. that. He's been doing a great job. His numbers have been cool. And the other thing that was really cool, and sign you up again, um, was the birthday event that they brought him and Castro and a few others on and mm -hmm. just to see a game like that kind of support streamers specifically our yeah, show is always great. really nice but it's been really cool to kind of make our step into FIFA and, and see all that going on and the community has been really supportive too like yeah. his community especially yeah. um, he's now in, like uh, implemented his own call emote as well like the community has been super supportive it's been amazing so uh, I think uh, this, business, this has been a really pleasant experience and especially now with uh, Joxon, you know, uh, going for, to even more events. I think there's going to be things are heating up. What's the deal? Oh, with, what's, you, yeah, what's, what's, what's the deal with uh, with London? Uh, so yeah, we have uh, Joxon going to to London for the uh, FUT Champions Cup April. I don't think it has a cool name this time. Um, so this is basically just like the monthly cup um, going for more points. I think Joxon theoretically is already qualified, um, so he just plays for a better seed. Um, for the World Championship, he's going to make two trips, I think, to Europe this month. Uh, first London, and then I want to say London again for the E Champions Cup or whatever it's called. So. Like everything is just champ like normal soccer terms, and then an <laughs> E before that. I just I can't keep it all straight. A lowercase E as well. Yeah, it's going to trigger red eye. Yeah. He's doing these events, so I don't know how he, <laughs> how he deals with this. But yeah, so um, it's going to start on the fifth. Um, Jackson is going to be starting his tournament on the. Sixth, yeah. So Friday is just uh, Xbox. On the Saturday is just PS4. And then on the last day, they're mixing it up again. And then obviously cool. the final is cross console. Um, and yeah, it's the second second tournament in a row um, after Singapore. He had a little bit of a, a low through, uh, in the... Um, it's not summer. It was winter. That's the one. That's the one. Your the, favorite, the, the good month. Your favorite time of the, <laughs> the, the year. Good, the good season, yeah. So he, he didn't qualify. He took a little bit of time off um, after winning um, two events in the first month, basically, of the game and kind of qualifying for everything already. So he kind of could, could take a bit of time off to focus on school. And now he put, it, put that time back in. He started streaming. He streamed this weekend 30-0 and and Weekend League. And he's starting to qualify for these events, so he's going to be busy traveling and busy being at our headquarters as well. I can tease that soon. Wow. Well, really? I I'm trying to do the beef roll. Just I'm not <laughs> as enthusiastic about him. Tease some things. It's just just a very low low brow teases here. Awesome. Oh, but you mentioned something interesting, which a lot of people Did don't, I? <laughs> you know, which a lot of people don't always take into consideration that a lot of these esports pros still you know look for in some type of ex education. Like you said, Joxton is actually, what, in college, right? Yes. Or like he is... I want to say he's in... He is in school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I, but, I, this, is, this is not me not necessarily knowing. This is me not knowing the American school system because you guys have a lot of more differentiations between high school and middle school and stuff, mm -hmm. and we yeah, don't have that. Safe. Where I come from, we don't have that. <laughs> yeah. We have mm -hmm. school, and that's we it. We have school and university. That's yeah. it. I mean, it is. That's it. Awesome. All right. <laughs> That's it for our weekly topics, really. Uh, and then we can move on to the Q&A section. As always, if you have any questions for us, make sure to hit us up with Cole PC, uh, either on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, really wherever. Just make sure to message us. And yeah, let's get started. Dr. Waldo, one of our fan elites, straight up. One question for you, Daniel. When will we see nice. Cole merch, or will we see Cole merch at GameStops? I mean, that's the, the goal. 
Um, you know, these things take a, a little bit longer to, we talked about just getting this partnership off, took a few months. So right. we, we're having ongoing conversations. Um, we, during the summer, we'll have a whole new merch line. Um, so we're having ongoing conversations with GameStop and others about how we're going to be having that and where it's going to be. Um, but our goal, and we're starting conversations at least on a GameStop online, um, there's a huge interest for us and the other two teams in Dallas to get on there. So we're getting there. And then the exciting thing from a digital content um, with their GameStop TV network is our goal will be to be in all of their 3,800 stores in the U.S., um, with our content. So you can go in, you can see your favorite Fortnite pros teaching you kind of how to get better at certain games. If it's FIFA, if it's Madden, if it's Fortnite. Um, so those types of things will be rolling out. And then the reverse of that's true too, that at our HQ, we're looking at ways that we're integrating GameStop, their items, their partners and things like that into it. So exclusive collectibles, you know, getting midnight releases in our venue, things like that. So it goes both ways, but definitely the answer to both sides that's yes and it's it's coming. Yeah, as always in esports, you know, these things can take time. Yeah. Um this one was more for you, Jason. How would you describe complexity's relationship with other big orcs like Optic, Envy, et cetera? Is it more competitive or focus on mutual growth, a bit of both? I mean, it's definitely competitive, of course, because we're always bidding for a lot of the same players and then going after a lot of the same sponsors, um, sometimes the same investors. So it's always going to be competitive. I think, um, you know, at high level, there's always a little bit of political drama. There's always going to be a little bit of backstabbing. You know, there's a lot of stories that could be told. <clears throat> but generally speaking, I think relationships are really good. Um, we try to collaborate as much as we can um, with multiple teams. Just today, I had a podcast come out around the GameStop announcement with Envy and, and Optic, and uh, Mike over at Envy and Hector over at Optic. And uh, I think you can see on the show, there's a lot of shared memories. There's a lot of mutual respect, and it was an honor to be on there with them. Um, you know, the PEA teams um, have been talking about and, and trying to figure out how we can best work together to grow the industry for many years now. Doesn't always work out as we had hoped. Um, but the, you know, the communications there, um, the efforts there. And, uh, yeah, so I think at a very high level, the top teams do communicate a, a good amount. And, uh, although it's always competitive, I think there's a lot of mutual respect and, uh, I think it's a good thing overall for the industry. I think the other thing, at least from my angle too, is we're in a sensitive time in esports that if anyone fails, if any league fails, if any game publisher fails, it sets us all backwards. So, you know, when I'm going out competing for the same dollars from sponsors, it's definitely a competition and we want our products to be better. We want to be a better option. But if one org puts a bad taste in the sponsor's mouth, it's going to kind of set us all back. It's going to close a ton of doors. Um, so we want to make sure that to Jason's point, we're, we're definitely competing. We definitely want to win across the board, but we never want to see anything go in a sour way or in a negative way. Cause it just, it really hurts the industry cause it's so sensitive right now. This wasn't on the docket, but just as a follow-up, um, would you say the relationship to Optic and Envy especially has changed now that we're all in the same location? I mean, I think it's evolved because we're we're nearby, but I've had good relations uh, you know, with these guys for years. Now that we're all in the same region and now we share the GameStop partnership, um, you know, there's going to be a lot more collaboration, I think, moving forward. Uh, you could also, you know, acknowledge though that also kind of raises the competitiveness we've always been competitive but now we're all in north texas so i think we're helping right. each other raise the bar right like we're, we're watching what they're doing i'm sure they're watching what we're doing like oh that's a good idea or i like that program or that merch or whatever it is and you know it just encourages you to do even better knowing that such great orgs are right down the street from us so yeah it's a win-win it's the best kind of win uh we haven't talked much about cs but luckily, the world has a CS-related questions. Uh, sure. You brought it up earlier. Vertical is now <laughs> in the active and duty pool. Yeah. Have you guys watched any Vertical games yet? Or maybe like a stream? I know Shaz has been streaming Vertical quite yeah. a bit. I mean, yeah. I'm torn. Like, I like that they're going to keep the game fresh and, and try different things. Um, like, the purist in me, the competitive purist in me, doesn't like maps that really, in my opinion, weren't built to be competitive maps. But it's great to kind of keep the game new and fresh and have have different maps to play. So I think it's really, really early. And who knows? Maybe we'll look back in six months and everyone will be like, wow, we didn't see that coming. That was a great map. But I'm not holding my breath either. 
Uh, there, there have been some, yeah. I think uh, I think the general reaction has been similar to what you just said. Like a lot of people were maybe a little bit more aggressive about being reserved about uh, Vertigo, but I think a lot of people came around already. Sha- I know Shaz. I, mean, came I think the biggest issue is the the map that they removed, not the map that they added. Like, yeah, that did make Vertigo, it any better. Vertigo is kind of. I mean, one point six was also already like bad, but the, we didn't have cash back in one point six, and now. We have cash, and they removed it, which was, I think, one of the more balanced maps. Yeah, uh, and they so. left left maps in that never see play, like Cobblestone or or Overpass, that are like niche. Um, and then they, you know, added Vertigo, um, which adds the like the third kind of niche map. So, I think that's a bigger issue. I don't think many people would have been upset if you remove Cobblestone and put Vertigo in. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Have you talked to Peter at all regarding Cash? No, I haven't talked to him about Vertigo yet. Cash was always one of our better maps. Such a shame. Yeah. (laughs) If Complexity had a physical mascot, what would it be? We got one. What are you (laughs) going to say? No, that, that's Grinch. an interesting question. And a tie. I, I red don't tie. know. Don't know. Red tie? It's just I a red tie. Know. Just put someone in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to ask Kevin to design a... What a neat question. To design a... I've never thought about Egg drop. We could just have an egg. The egg drop? Yeah, for years that was the bot in, in our IRC channel and now in our Discord. Could basically be a mascot. Could make a physical yeah, version of it. would be a weird mascot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> There's Speaking nothing. of variables, the last question was from him, I guess. Well, well, both him and Waldo asked the same question. Um, how Any news on Sick? Like, how has he been with the team thus far? I mean, it's still super early. They've played a few scrims. Um, Rogue was going to go to China, so we weren't even sure when we were going to get to start, but they ended up not going. So he moved up here on Friday, drove in from Vegas with his father. Um, then we flew his father home. And yesterday I gave him and his dad, who's like a 50 year Cowboys fan, oh, uh, a tour of, of awesome. Cowboys nation. So his dad was super stoked and uh, got to do a little walk through that HQ with them. So I think he's just kind of settling in here and getting in some time with the team and getting to know people a little better. And, you know, we're, we're excited about it, but it's still real early going. Seems, you know, we've known he's a great guy. Um, he's pretty mellow, you know, he's not the kind of guy who's going to come in a room and like annoy everybody. He's just real kind of steady. And, uh, we think he's going to be a good presence on the team and looking forward to giving him a shot. I guess, uh, he'll answer that question. We'll answer that question himself on the server at some point. So yeah, look with, forward to it. Yeah. With that, I close out this week's press conference. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you guys for being here. You bet. Thank you. Thanks everybody Easy. for watching. Yeah. Leave us thoughts. Um, in in the comments we do always go back and read them and uh you know we really want the show to be about the fans we want questions to come in we want to give snappy updates um and answer questions there's no other organization that i'm aware of that really does a weekly show just dedicated to updates and fan questions and that's why we named it the press conference appreciate you watching and shout out to our producer doug who's uh, always patiently <laughs> doing the show for us every week thank you thanks 